What's going on guys, Philip Atreides Genius. All right, Bitcoin pushing higher. As per our last video, we said watch for this inside bar setup and watch for the breakout up and sure enough, that's what we've gotten. So the move up on this next part of the leg has started and the question is how high are we gonna go? Got some levels and some metrics that I wanted to go over with you guys to give you an idea of what's possible as we get into the final part of what I believe is this parabolic move. So let's dive into this video and check it out. Genius. Guys, really quickly, we do have our Black Friday specials. These have an extra markdown for the Black Friday event. And if you get into the 299 bundle, I'm going to throw in this MTF indicator that we'll be looking at here in this video. So just bear that in mind. So check that out. These are especially marked down for the month of November and Black Friday. Okay, diving into the video. So now that we're breaking up here on the daily, we're breaking out of this inside bar setup that we discussed on the last video. Uh, you know, the question is how high can this go? Now, if you look on the daily chart, we, we do get into this zone here between the um, high that was put in on the move down and then the all-time high here. So all-time high per coin base is 19,891. I do think we're gonna most likely take that out. Now, we could have some games that are being played here. If you notice, if you zoom in on this here, you'll notice that this bar here, uh, had a low here, we closed on that level and then opened here and this bar couldn't get much higher. So 19,000, I suspect will be a bit of a wall there. Uh, we do also have a volume node here at 19,400. So I don't think it's just conquer 19,000 and rip right through to 20,000. I think there's gonna be a, a bit of a battle in there, similar to what we saw here at 18,000. But one thing that I wanted to point out to you guys, actually a couple of things. One is the MTF indicator here is um, at a level, uh, and I'm looking at this on the daily chart, so I have the setting for this set to um, a three hour setting, so it's looking at a different time period overlay, uh, and it gives you basically when you want to start looking at possibly getting out of the up move and looking for a short, or you're staying in it, uh, as long as it's not crossing the zero line, you can buy the dips. Uh, and so in a move like this, uh, what I look for is what's the overall reading giving us? And are we making uh, uh, higher highs on a lower reading? And we do get some of that here. But what I wanted to show you guys was back when we topped out in the middle of 2019, that was the last time we had kind of a blow off move. We got a reading on this of about 650 or so. And we're only right now at about 400 and uh, 85 on this highest reading a bit of a pullback here down to 432 on the reading so um and you know again i look at this this most of the time we're using this on smaller time frames to let us know that it's okay to take a directional trade or to possibly end the trend on a smaller time frame but i do like to look at those higher levels uh, on the higher time frames to ga gauge how uh, strong the move is relative to other tops so this is telling us that we have room to run the other one that is telling us we have room to run is gbtc if you look at the GBTC, now I do have a few other things overlaid. The price of Bitcoin is the candles here, but we also have things like um, the actual GBTC price there. That's the Bitcoin price. Blue is going to be the stock market and uh, this gold color is the price of gold. So you can see kind of like how things are, are correlated. Um, primarily, we're looking at the Bitcoin and the stock market. Uh, gold's uh, after the move up in August has really just come off and has become negatively divergent with the stock market and Bitcoin. Bitcoin and the stock market, as you can see, if you zoom out, more or less tend to go together. Although more recently, though, Bitcoin has been way more bullish than the stock market, uh, creating some divergence there. And if you zoom way in, you can kind of see that here. So, but uh, that being said, I look at the GBTC premium and we're only at levels that historically have been very bullish for buying the dips on Bitcoin, especially in uptrends. Now, if this starts to crank up here, that to me is going to be a big warning sign, similar to what we saw here. You know, this is the GBTC premium, it means how much over spot are people willing to pay for a share of GBTC? Okay, sometimes it gets as high as 40% or more over spot, and that's usually at the end of big cycles. Uh, when we topped out in February at around 10,000 plus, we hit, we got up to about 36% premium, which is the low end of the overbought spectrum that I have highlighted here. So we're not even near that. That's what's interesting about this move. So I do think we have uh, room to go to the upside. Now, question is, where's the upside? 
Uh, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys, I pulled some FIB numbers because once you start getting into undiscovered price country where there's just no previous price points, really all you can do is, uh, you know, take some measured moves off of previous price action. So the one I did was I took just from zero to the all-time high and gave our my typical FIB extension of minus 236 and that takes us up to approximately 24, 25,000 or so, 24,500 uh, plus. The other thing I did was, you know, what's the other big move? And this, it was this low to high. And when I pulled it, you know, a, a lot of the FIB extensions are already getting hit. So what I did was I just took a 100% of this move and it gave me 24,600 or so. And that so those two ex levels are together here. And I think that if this is to play out, the parabolic move is to blow off. I think that's a pretty decent level when it comes to Fibonacci, uh, 24,600, give or take. I think that's a target that's reasonable given the size of this move and the parabolic structure that you could get a blow off to that level there. Uh, and I would expect it uh, to happen rather quickly. I'm talking like where you see Bitcoin move like a thousand bucks in an hour. I mean, that's going to tell you that's a blow off move there. It's just not a sustainable move in any way, shape or form. And then we'll see a pullback. But keep in mind now you're talking about a 20 to 30 percent pullback from wherever that level, that top is. So, you know, a lot of people were thinking, oh, we're going to get a pullback give a, uh, from these levels. We'll get a pullback down to like 12,000. That might actually end up being higher. I mean, if we do pull back from those upper levels, even a 30% pullback is only going to give you like 14 grand or 15 grand, uh, depending where we top out at. So just uh, bear that in mind. But that should give a decent pullback of 20 to 30. Do we get 40% this time around? I don't know. I think that really depends on how stupid this goes if it really blows off hard. Okay, that'll dictate how much of a pullback we get in percentage terms. So once that looks like that's in, and that's going to look like something like this on the daily or on the weekly candle, where you have a pretty big wick on the weekly candle, I think that's going to be a big tell that that's probably the top. And then we can start discussing uh, pullback levels and things like that. All right, so that's the way it looks now. I think we break all time highs possibly into the weekend. And if it really goes crazy, I think this 24,600 level, give or take, will be a, a realistic spot for a blow off top. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you're interested in that indicator. Go ahead and sign up on our Black Friday specials. Look forward to seeing you guys in the room. I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Trade Genius.